Hi, David. David. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, David. How are you? Okay, let, let me Hi, David. Okay, so uh, let, let me introduce the speaker. So I'm very glad to welcome Dihua Zhang from the University of Minnesota and announce his talk on certain Poisson summation formula on GL1 and Langlands automorphic functions. Thank you, Dima. I'm very happy to give a talk here. Um, I see friends. And this is a really excellent uh, seminar. I, I try to keep up uh, every week. Yeah, a lot of interesting topics. Okay, so, um, so uh, I, this, this is joint work with my students, Celine Rowe. Uh, I try to uh, thinking about how to extension uh, extend uh, the Tate thesis uh, for general L function. So we will see. Um, so let's look call that the L function. Uh, so given let's see this is this this first page yes. Okay, giving a row. Um, this G is you can take a G. Uh, come, how come this is first page? G is uh, let, let's assume G is a case spread reductive group uh, defined over number field, and then you have row. This is a dual group, uh, finite dimensional representation, uh, and then the pi, the pi such that this functorial, how come I saw that this, this, this is the second page. Yeah, there's one page before. Now this is second page. Yeah, so this is the first page, sorry. <laughs> So the, I take k number field and a ideal, and k is split reductive group, and then g is the complex dual group. So you have this finite dimensional representation, and you take a sigma is cusp, cuspidal automorphic representation, and the Lanz L function defines by the Euler product. Uh, of course, the local fa local L factor is defined in principle by uh, local Lanz conjecture. And then Lanz show that this uh, Euler product uh, converges <coughs> for real part S large and then satisfy has a metamorphic continuation and admits functional equation like this. Let's see. Come. Oh, here, here comes. Okay. And then you, you for this row, uh, the functority, right? So the functority um, says that you have pi in G or N such that the L function match and the epsilons match. Okay. And the goodman jacke theory show that the Lanz conjecture is true for the standard L function of, of the cast form pi, okay? And then of course, uh, if Lanz functority holds and with, with goodman jacke will imply the Lanz conjecture for L functions if this lifts the cast form, okay? Uh, 
and, and also that if Lalande's conjecture for L function is proved for sufficiently many L functions, and then the cocktail P attached Shapiro converse theorem will show that the Lalande's functionality will true. Right. So in many cases, like an endoscopic type, this was proved this way. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't understand the Goodman-Jacquet -Ja statement. Uh, the conjecture is that there exists pi. Yeah. But uh, what does it mean to hold for LS pi? They already come from, from some pi. Well, there is a pi, this functality, right? Such that the L function is the same. Yes. This statement? Yes. So yes. Well, that's the part of Lanlan's functality, right? So what is just saying that, I think he's just saying that it's the identity map. If you start with the group G as GLN, then functoriality means you take pi as pi, and yeah. then go to Mazaké means everything's true about it. So I see. Really, I thought reality is sort of a, not really in play there. It's just it's just the identity map on the GLN. Yeah. But then, of yeah. course, it's, it's the target of all these other functions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lana, I'll go to my jacket. Yeah, yes, yes. That's the identity map. Well, the, I well, I said this is Lana's conjecture for L function holds. So this means this guy has a metamorphic continuation function equation. I see, thank you very much. Right, this is Lalande's conjecture for L function. Okay. So now the question is how to establish the Lalande's conjecture for L function without using Lalande's functality. Uh, it's well known that Lalande's shady method and this global theta integral langen selberg method uh, established uh, many important cases uh, for the Lanz conjecture for L function. And more recently, like in 2000, Brahm and Kashidan proposed that how to use the Poisson summation, Fourier transform and Poisson summation formula, just like Tate's thesis or goodman jacke work um, to generalize to the uh, to establish the Lalande's conjecture for L function. Okay, so that's that's the usually called the Brahman Kashidan proposal. And of course, uh, more recently, uh, Bao Changu uh, has also suggest yes uh, to construct the 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 invariant distribution, which is important for this method. Um, but in this talk, uh, uh, I'll try to discuss the formulation joined with uh, the Ling Lo. So how to use uh, harmonic analysis of GL1 to study Lalande's L function in general. So this can be viewed as a, a new general generalization of Tate's thesis. Well, um, in other method, so you have a big group or geometry to consider. And, and in this approach, uh, I'm talking now, is try to see if you forget about all the geometry. So only concentrate uh, on the analytic part. So see, how much analysis we can see so that the Lalande the L function has a nice property. So that's that's the point. Okay, probably you know it's a, it's a not good formulation. I don't know. Yeah, let's let's see what happened. Okay, so we have to take assumption that assume local Lalande functality for G rho at all local places. Yeah, so in other words, the, I take this uh, as a known, but of course the local Lalande conjecture is known for many situations. Okay, so we take this as grounded. And then you take uh, sigma cuspidal, which is a restricted tensor product, uh, 
And so according to this, we are able to define a, a so-called sigma rho Schwartz space at uh, ideals, okay? So this is a smooth function uh, on ideals. Uh, sorry, there's no C, okay? So that's smooth, not compact support, I'm sure. I shall get rid of this. Okay, that's the most function. And then uh, we can define the free operator, which also depends on sigma Dickman law. Okay. So in the Brahman Kashidan situation, in a proposal, the free transform only depends on rho, and the Schwartz function also depends on rho. Okay. But now I put sigma in this in the function uh, and put the sigma in the uh, Fourier, Fourier transfer, Fourier operators, okay? But in this case, uh, it takes uh, this space to the dual space, okay? But uh, th these functions you can renormalize so that uh, which sits in the L2 space so that eventually uh, this free operator can be normalized so that become a unitary operator in the L2 space, okay? So the first theorem is that under the assumption one, meaning that local Lorentz functality for zero at all local places, and then you take sigma, and we consider this, this kind of theta function. You take summation over k cross. Yeah, but the function takes, uh, it's no longer a test function. It's a sort of sigma rho Schwartz function. Okay. So we show that as long as sigma is hospital, and for any rho, uh, this theta series is absolute convergence. Okay, so you have a, a, a guy here, a very nice. And then the conjecture <clears throat> is this for the Poisson submission formula. So we call this the sigma rho Poisson submission formula. So under the assumption one, the local Lorentz conjecture, and so take cast forms, uh, there is uh, two, a non-trivial k-invariant uh, linear functionals, uh, epsilon sigma rho, uh, epsilon sigma delta rho, uh, says uh, over, over this uh, sigma rho short space and sigma delta rho short space, respectively, such that uh, this identity holds. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I shall erase, now I shall erase this. Um, maybe you can just maybe say do a bit a, a word or two how the local uh, assumptions uh, imply this uh, uh, conjecture which is completely global yes uh, this is a statement or conjecture I, I'm going to explain how to define this space so in the definition in the process you will see how this uh, local Lorentz conjecture will apply, okay, later on. So, and, and then this, this uh, Poisson summation formula holds for all these functions. And, and uh, of course you can realize now you, if you have this and then uh, this should be responsible for a global, functional equation of the L functions, sigma rho, right? So um, just like a Tate situation. And, you and, your, do you, do you, and these, these uh, functions, you're normally in Tate's thesis, of course, it's a short space of the Adels, not the Adels. And so here you're looking at the Adels. Yes, yes, so you, can you can reformulate, you can reformulate the thesis uh, in the Adels. Uh, oh, but yeah, I'm just wondering I, I, what I'll reformulate uh, Goodman-Jacquet. Okay. Okay. So that uh, Goodman-Jacquet 
function were lived on the GLM instead of matrix. Okay. So, uh, and then this will be the, the, the extension of, of that. So the local components are almost all just the characteristic function of the unit locally? Uh, well, it's a basic function for, uh, we have to introduce okay. the basic function here. Okay, okay. You're, you're going to go out to the definition. Never mind. Go on. Anyway, just yeah, the, the definition from the goes through the definition, you'll see yeah, okay. what yeah. happened. So, okay. in other words, globally, the CC infinity A cross cannot be seat here. You can you can have a map into, but it's not a subspace. The univector, univ you know, oh, if almost everywhere is a, the univector, it's not a function here. Yeah, okay. So now, of course, if you assume global Reynolds conjunct functionality for for zero, and then the image is cuspidal, we can prove that this this is true, and also this functional is taking. Yeah, so this is x. So this functional is taking uh, by this theta function. Yeah, but in general, you you may have extra terms here, okay? But, but in this case, because the image is cuspidal, so that you take theta function. Okay, this is true. Yeah, so this will follow from our reformulation for GL situation. Okay, so now, yeah, so this is what I, the comment. Uh, yeah, so this uh, Poisson summation formula is responsible for global elf functional equation for, for the general L function. And now if G is GL1 and, and sigma is character, and so this will be the theta thesis. Okay, but uh, we, the second theorem is, so if we take a G is GLN, rho is a standard, and then this person summation is true for any class forms. Okay, so I, I'm going to prove this. Uh, yeah, a little bit later, okay. And then the proof of this theorem rely on the reformulation of local theory of goodman K, and then the classical Parson summation formula of uh, the affine space, okay. And then the, this, the proof of, of this theorem also serves as a base of our reformulation, our formulation of this Sigma rho Parson summation uh, conjecture in general. Okay, so 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 we have to go through this. Okay, so now let's take. So it's a reformulation of, of goodman K. So you take a, a local places and this local field. So your GLN, this is standard representation. And then you take a. So here is the usual Schwarz space, right? So the usual Schwartz space, so UTF. And then the standard Schwartz space, I take C, you, you modify, normalize by the determinant uh, N over two. And then we define the standard Schwartz space on G, G or N now, right? It's just the restriction of this function, okay? And so you, we can show that uh, this function is a subspace of L2. Okay, this, this is not hard. And now you, you have to define uh, the free transform. So you take the distribution, uh, psi, uh, trees, g, and then you normalize by the determinant n over two. And then you define the free transform as a, like a generalized Hankel transform, so convolution of the kernel function with uh, the, the Schwarz space, Schwarz function, okay? And then we, we show that, yeah, so we show that for this function, and then, then this standard Fourier transform and this classical Fourier transform has such a relation, okay? So basically there is a diagram, right? So that's, that's the, uh, the, the standard Fourier transform. 
and, and this is the classical Fourier transform. So you can have this commuting diagram. Okay. And now you take uh, pi. So any irreducible admissible representation. If F is Archimedean, you take uh, uh, pi is Kassman Warlock type. Yeah. And so you take a matrix coefficient and then you have a, a, standard, a, a standard Schwartz function. And then you write the goodman K integral like this. Yeah, this is the original definition and you normalize like this. So you become a theta integral like this. Okay, so this chi is a quasi character. Okay, so that's that's standard. And then Goodman Jacquet says that uh, this theta function, this is a renormalized theta function, but uh, it's just a renormalization, right? It converges for Leopard S large and meet uh, metamorphic continuation. And then you have a functional equation like that. So this is a Lorentz, local Lorentz uh, gamma function. And then this, uh, the GCD, right? So the theta function, holomorphic multiple L function uh, in the non Archimedean case. So basically the fractional ideal generated by the theta integrals, it looks like this. And the Archimedean you have uh, the uh, the boundaries in the vertical strip, right? So for any unitary character, and then you have the boundary vertical strip, and then the any polynomial such that this is the bounded this, and then the polynomial also makes theta function bounded. Yeah, that's that's a, uh, good Manjaki theory. And uh, here we have to mention that uh, there is standard basic function, L basic L standard. Uh, inside, uh, inside here, okay, but 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 this function uh, has two properties: the Fourier transform uh, affects this vector, and then you plug in uh, the the theta integral for the unramified data, you you get exactly L function. Yeah, so that's is, is expected. So now, uh, Brown and Kajilang suggest. There should be invariant, the invariant distribution, yeah, can be understood in the by the Bernstein center, uh, which is has following three equivalent distributions. Okay, so first of all, the Bernstein center is defined as an endomorphism ring of the identity functor in the category of smooth uh, representation of this G. Oh, well, this is a periodic, okay. Um, uh, the space uh, invariant uh, essentially compact uh, dis distributions. So essential compact uh, is convolved with the compact function, uh, you get a compact function. And space, the regular function of the Bernstein variety. So in other words, you have a distribution in the Bernstein center, you you get the regular function on this. The relation is the pi applied to this uh, uh, essential compact uh, invariant distribution, you get this function times identity. So that's, that's from uh, 1984, Bernstein paper, telling notes. Okay, and so now we show that uh, uh, for the uh, non Archimedean situation, for any m integer, you define the slice. Yeah, so g is g or n, and then you take a determinant, uh, take an abstract value, and uh, equal to q to the uh, negative m. Okay, and then you take a one, is a characteristic function of this slice. Uh, and then the invariant distribution is. You cut off, right? So that that distribution, uh, phi standard is not uh, in the Bernstein center, but you cut off, and this cut off 
lives in the bandstand center. And then, then because of this is in the bandstand center, so that you, you get F standard M, the regular function in this uh, bandstand variety attached to uh, this uh, invariant distribution. Yeah, basically you get a pi and cross a character and S. And so you define pi uh, chi S is a twist. And then you, this function, yeah, F standard evaluated as pi equal to the summation of this regular function on the Bernstein variety. And we show that this convergence for, for for real part is sufficient large and has a metamorphic continuation. And this, you show that this function actually equal to the Lalland's gamma, gamma function. So in other words, gamma function is not a regular function on uh, Bernstein variety, but, but you can cut off uh, by the slice. Uh, each slice is in the, is a regular function on Bernstein variety, okay? Just maybe a, a comment, where does the character come from? Which character? Like in the previous slide, you had a... Pardon me, which character? The additive character. You mean the additive character? Yes, yes. The full well, additive character is from the, the distribution, right? The distribution defines the Fourier transform as a, con as a Hankel transform. Okay, so it's... The Fourier that. transform has a character, right? So this is why, but I just, uh, because for simplification of notation, I, I didn't put, uh, put, didn't put this Psi here, here, okay? So if, if more precisely, I should put a Psi here, okay? More questions? All right. So now you take for any, <clears throat> Uh, so now we descend the G O N to G O one. So for any uh, local field characteristic zero, uh, take a determinant. Okay, so this is a rational map, and so you take a pi, and then the standard Schwarz space C, and then I take this uh, uh, random transform right, fiber integration. Uh, this right, so this is the hyperspace, hyperplane. So you take take this, and now uh, we we show that this function actually is a um, smooth function on, on this local space. Uh, it's technical, okay, uh, but uh, you can prove. But I, I will could not talk about the proof. Here. Could you okay. remind us again what script C pi is? Well, this is. This is the usual Schwarz function on the matrix multiplied by the determinant G absolute value N over two. Right, but now I'm talking about the next one with the pi. Pi, yeah, so script, pi, script uh, C pi, pi is, this is the matrix yeah, coefficient. Yeah, what's that space? A matrix what? coefficient, okay. Matrix Very coefficient. Good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. That's what I was asking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you, this is like a yeah. new formulation of good jacket, right? So you have matrix yeah, okay. gotcha. and test right. function. But now you're just integrating over the slice instead of over the whole. Yeah, thing. you integrate okay. the slice. Okay, I got okay. you. And, then, and then the variable yes. here is that. Yeah, and the variable here determines the slice, and then each of these integrals, when you do them all together, give you Godemar say yeah, okay integral. Yeah. Yeah. You, okay. If you do, you take a million transform, and then you go back to. Godemar okay. Right. Godemar okay. Yes. Exactly. And, and this function actually is not too bad. So if we take any, any irreducible admissible representation, and then you can have a number, real number, such that for any kappa, which is bigger than uh, this number, and then you modify, modify this uh, fiber integration by this de determinant, it will belong to L2. So in other words, the singularity is reasonable, right? Although it's, you know, because now you consider F 
just like uh, Tate thesis, right? The, you take a Schwarz space of F and restrict F cross. And then you have two, two boundaries, zero and infinity. So yeah, so this function is basically essentially, you, you know, not, not too bad. Yeah, so the, the singularity is controlled by, by this guy. Okay, and then even more, um, uh, if pi is unitalizable, and then you can take kappa just n over two. So that's enough. Okay. And so you take, a, I take a pi Schwartz space. Pi Schwartz space will be span uh, of this fiber, fiber integration. Okay. So that's, that's, that's the subspace of the smooth function. And now you can formulate Right, you uh, as I, I just uh, as Steve just asked. So this will take, take a million transform, and then you you get a theta integral back. And so this you can write back to Goodman Jackie theta integral, so that you can prove all the properties you can get. Okay, but now the only thing here is the basic function. Now Steve, you see this is a basic function. So the basic basic function now is the fiber integration of the basic function and the zonospherical function of pi at the unramified place. Okay, so this is no longer just the uni, uni uh, I mean uni vectors, things like that. Okay, so uh, according to the theory, so this, this uh, is true. And now you define the Fourier transform uh, 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 naturally, you design the frame transform, right? So, so they design, define the frame transform from pi to pi dual. Now the Schwarz space has uh, is de determined by pi, and so you get this. And then this diagram now uh, is similar to uh, previous reformulation, but now you corroborate with uh, the, the matrix coefficient here. Okay. So you produce the short space with depends on pi. And then you have Fourier transform like that. And, uh, and now I think it's a technical, it takes pages to prove that this, this Fourier transform is well-defined. Yeah, so because um, we define, you see, you define the Fourier transform, like you pull, you, you take function here, you pull back, and this is, is not injective, right? So you have many fibers. So in other words, you have to show that this, the definition of free transform is independent choice of the pre-image. So it takes pages to prove this, but it's well-defined. Okay, independent choice of C um, uh, matrix coefficient. So you do this. And then after you get this, of course you descend the functional equation, right? So that's, you descend the functional equation. And then you can show that uh, these properties are holds, okay? And, and also take the basic function to the basic function or the dual space. So uh, every, everything match perfect. Okay, good. A any questions? So I had just one, the one question about the, local behavior near one? In other words, that this is supposed to be a, a near, near zero function. Near zero. Well, no, I actually actually asking about whether it's locally constant near one. You mean near zero? In other words, you, the basic function. No, no, I mean, I'm, I'm not worried about the asymptotics, you know, at zero and infinity. I'm just thinking about the continuity properties of these functions, right? Yeah, because I mean, it's a smooth it. function. Okay. Okay. It's so smooth close function. to one. We, we prove, we prove this is by smooth one. function. Yeah. Okay. So we prove right. this is smooth function. Okay. Okay. So that's not an issue with this direct. Yeah, that's direct not integral. an issue. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's the only issue is just a zero on infinity. Okay. 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 So you get this. And now. Uh, in order to understand the, um, this Fourier transform, we go uh, further to find the kernel function. 
And so in order to define the kernel function, you need to regularize it. So we take a sequence of test function, uh, which is uh, supported in the, you can assume uh, supported in the compact neighborhood of identity and such that the integral, uh, you, you know, just like Gaussians, right? You, you have any uh, test function, it's converges to the, the, the delta distribution. Okay, so this, this is like a, the Gaussians. So this is delta mass supported here. And then you take, assume that uh, the matrix coefficient is normalized at the identity is one. And then I dis define, we define the distribution kernel is regularized. Yeah, so uh, uh, this, this standard distribution against, against this uh, matrix coefficient. Yeah. And so this, uh, how, how to regularize this, it, it takes the limit. And then uh, it's uh, again random transform, but the, the standard uh, distribution cut off by this, uh, by this uh, CL. Yeah, you convert with this, this is the cut off, uh, and then you take a limit. So, so when you talk cut off, do you, I, this is the cut off uh, kernel, right? So L here. Okay, so this kernel. And uh, it takes pages to show that uh, this kernel is smooth function. Yeah. Uh, yeah, converging is, is a big issue. And uh, uh, so you, in order to show this is smooth, this uh, means that uh, the, the previous regularization is uniform in the local compact neighborhood, right? So, and then you show this is smooth. And then we, we show that there is a S pi real number, as long as this number is less than S pi, the following <clears throat> limit. So now I do the meaning transform of this kernel function, but since this kernel function is a generalized function so that you need to take a principal value. Yeah, so it, it's a regularized, regularized. You cut off, cut off this, the kernel, and then you take a mean, mean transform, and then you take a limit. So we show that this exists and equal to the gamma function. Yeah, so this is, the, uh, this is something like, you know, mean and transform, like a classical, like a Bessel, Bessel distribution, Bessel function, and you take a mean and transform, you get your gamma function back, okay? But, but now this is in, in, in this, uh, for, for, for general gamma function now, but you have to, yeah, it takes pages to prove this. Uh, the analysis is uh, sort of quite involved. And then we want to show that because the, in the definition, in the definition, the kernel function, well, this is what defined, but here is the matrix coefficient, right? And also you have this sequence involved. We have to show that this kernel actually is well-defined independent of the choice of this cutoff and the choice of matrix coefficient. So only depends on pi, okay? Yeah, so we, we have to show this. Hmm. Yeah, we, yeah, this is number three, uh, we prove this. And then finally, we prove that this kernel is the right kernel. In other words, the free free operator here uh, is represented by the convolution of this kernel against uh, the test function. Now you take a test function because we are the distribution. So, so this is like a classical generalization of classical Hankel transform uh, in this setting. Okay. So now we go to global. Sorry. So you take a, a K is number field, uh, uh, A is ring ideal, and take a places. And then you get, you get, so, so yeah, I, I should take any, 
any representation of adelic group, uh, you can define the short space. See, yeah. So of course, for cast forms, you can do it. But from our, from my discussion, you you realize you can realize that you don't need an automorphic assumption. You need you don't need a cast form assumption uh, in order to take define this space. Yeah, basically the restrict tensor product of the local uh, Schwarz space. Uh, and this restricted tensor product uh, is with respect to the basic function. So in other words, uh, the function factorizable function will be right like this. And almost everywhere is the basic function. Okay. Yeah, so that that, that definition is it has nothing to do with automorphic, it has nothing to do with cusp. Yeah. So that's the definition. And then uh, the fiber integration, right? So you you have this global guy now, right? So you have global guy, and, and you take this, and you take a global fiber integration, and so this also work. Okay, so this function can be expressed uh, like this. Okay. And, and, And then you show uh, we show that uh, this function is smooth, okay. And uh, if you take uh, take this take take this function is uh, factorizable, yeah, matrix for coefficient of also factorizable, and then this function is factorizable. So 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 in other words, the same the same symbol. You have two definitions. One is take Euler product, uh, ten, restrict tensor product, and, and another is a global definition. And we show the global definition, and then uh, local definition is same. Okay, so by restrict tensor product, this function is there. Okay. Okay. Once you have this, and then you take a global Fourier transform. Uh, take this a a a again. When you take this, you, you don't need to assume this pi is, is automorphic, okay? Yeah, I just formally define this. And then we show that this free transform takes a basic function to basic function, okay? Uh, and, and so that for, for, for these guys, you can, you, can, you can define the free transform in the global setting, right? So this is the global setting. And then you verify the equivalent property by action of A cross. Look at that. And then, of course, you can define global theta integral like this, yeah, the convergence and the function equation. So these are standard. Once you get this set up, and, and and for the cast forms, it's no problem, right? So you just leave formulation of, of the goodman K in some sense, but of course, plus this technical lead, lead formulation from GLN to GL1. Okay, so now let's talk about the Poisson summation formula for, for this guy. So you take this, and we show that this convergent. And by the way, for for this moment, we we take a pi is cuspidal, okay. And if non-cuspidal, probably this is not the right distribution. Um, and then we show that the 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 Poisson summation in this setting holds, but as a as a function or the theta function of G, uh, uh, it the ideal group. Okay, so first of all, we want to show that uh, this is uh, uh, absolute converging. Okay, so you, you write, this is from goodman K, so you can write the matrix coefficient as a integral. And, and then this, uh, we, we want to write just uh, as long as you prove the one will be enough. So you write this, uh, you know, uh, 
And then you, you have to manipulate this integral. Eventually, yeah, maybe I go a little bit quick. I'm a little bit slow here. So, so eventually you go, you, you get back, you see the class, classical Poisson here, okay? The classical Poisson. So in other words, already originally is uh, the the person the theta function for G, for ideal ideal group, uh, and now you become the GL uh, theta function, and the GL theta function, of course, uh, because now this the H and H and G is has determinant one, so that you can write this, it's the same, okay? And so that uh, this, this now become a, a part of the, the main term of the classical Poisson, because now F is the test function now of the matrix. Okay. And, and, and now, so this guy, you write like this, and then from goodman Jacquet, this guy now is a, a modern growth on, on H and G. And so the classical Poisson summation is here. And so you, you rewrite it as uh, the main term and the boundary. So you write the boundary like this. And then just like a good Jacke, the boundary term will be zero because of the cuspidality. And so that this guy, you only get the main term back. And so the, uh, now for the main term, you just write it back and it becomes the other end of the Poisson summation. Yeah, so so that's a, that's a basically the the Poisson summation for pi is over ideal is basically is you go back to the GL situation and then use the similar argument of, of Goldman K, so you get you get this. Okay, and now we we try to do general right now is the assumption, so you have a, a row general. Um, uh, split reductive group. And then you have this, uh, take the local lens. And so you have a transfer, right? Transfer, but this is irreducible, admissible representation, right? And so now you simply, you just define this. Yeah, so this short space is just the image because now the advantage is now we have no geometry, no group. So everything is the GL1, GL1, right? So you just define this and you define it by, by the restrict tensor product and the basic function, uh, you just take it like this. A Fourier transform also take it. So it looks like routine, okay? And so now the thing is, uh, we want to show that we don't want, we don't want to use global Learn on the functory uh, transfer, okay? So you will use the local to get the data ready. And then you try to show that the, the global result for sigma rho, okay? So we take assumption. Uh, now this is just irreducible, admissible of this adelic group, okay? And, and then the assumption is this, this adelic representation the unramified part, right? So this is the frobenius heck conjugacy class and this the parameters. So this parameter is bounded, there's the, the, the a uniform bound for any uh, local places which is beyond uh, this S pi. So this is the assumption too. And so theorem. So if, if pi is adelic representation, adelic group, with assumption two, and then this theta function uh, converges, absolute converging. Okay, so you, you can prove this without a, without a automorphy or without cus form, cuspidality. And so the proof is uh, quite technical. Yeah, so, but this proof is a key to prove uh, the, the sigma, sigma rho theta function convergence. Okay, so in other words, this is the key to prove theorem one. Okay. Okay, so uh, under the assumption one, this is local Lorentz conjecture for this, and you take cusp form. 
And then we show that the assumption two holds for, for the image so that the theta function converges. Yeah, so this theta function converges. Okay, so that's a global result. Uh, without use uh, global Lorentz functality. Okay, so now let's formulate uh, the Poisson summation formula. Um, uh, we, we want to do a little bit more. So you take a pi and you take uh, the, the special Schwarz function. So this is the Schwarz function, pi Schwarz function, and we We take this is local, right? We right. take this test, test function. function. Can I ask a question before we yes, go yes, too far? Yes, <laughs> this local Langlands <coughs> conjecture. What? Uh, how do you set it up? I mean, in the GLN case, they match root numbers and L functions of the ranking product. Yeah. But yeah. How is? How do you do it in general? I mean, your is is there? A, well, I I, I only need the, the, the transfer. You need what? I, I need I, I a need local transfer. I, I, you know, you know, you know sigma, sigma and then the pi, pi on GL. Right? Right. The local around the conjecture you have, you have, if you pull, you pull, pull local around the conjecture for, for G, G, and then you have you a Lorentz parameter, parameter, and the Lorentz parameter right. goes to so GL, GL, and then, and then the GL Lorentz parameter determines a unique guy, guy on GL, on GL pi, pi, right? pi, right? So you just assume you have, I mean, you just assume given a representation of the, uh, I mean, the group, you have a, I mean, a something on the automorphics on the representation theoretic side, right? Is that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, I only need the existence of pi. Okay. Okay. And so you take uh, now um, this test this function, test function is compact, compact support. support. Okay. So this is all. And then the, this is also technical to show that this space is actually equal to the CC infinity uh, days. Yeah. So in other words, once you take a C is a test function and this space is independent of pi, right? So this is a kind of expected. Yeah, but uh, it's technical to prove after your descent to fiber integration down here. Okay, now you define the global S pi uh, zero. So this will be a restrict tensor product where there is at least one guy, one local place. This, this is in CC infinity is here, okay? And then I to take uh, two zeros will be this and the Fourier transform also this, okay? So uh, 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 it, it's not hard to show that uh, such function exists, okay? So in other words, this, this space is non-zero, okay? Uh, and then you take a general row, uh, G and row, and then under the local Lorentz assumption, we can define this, okay? So that, that's just formal. And so once we define this, and then we can state the Poisson submission formula. So under the assumption one, so for, for zero, so you can have two, two functionals and such that this identity holds. That's the previous uh, part of uh, the previous conjecture. And now moreover, this is new. So for, for this guy, uh, which is, is, is this special function space. And then the Poisson submission, you can take uh, the functional to be the, the theta function evaluated the one, okay? And, 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 and then the, uh, we can also prove that in, in this formulation, we can prove that uh, if pi is, is not cuspidal, see, uh, we we lay, write down the complete proof now for the square integrable. So if a square integrable and then the Poisson summation holds for 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 this guy, okay. But but the point is, if not cuspidal, we have to take the function in this zero zero space. 
And we expect that this is true for any automorphic representations. Yeah, take if pi is any automorphic representation, and so this is true. Okay, thank you. Thank you very Thank you much, very for, much your for your talk. talk. Uh, uh, questions, questions, please. please. Yeah, I, I, I have to ask uh, regarding the uniform bound. Yeah. yeah. Uniform, uniform bound. bound. You had you a had had conjecture, conjecture on some, some bound. Which, 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 which one? one? You mean you assumption? Mean assumption? Assumption two? This one? Because I, I, I just wanted to, to ask if something, something you can actually obtain. I, mean, I cannot, I cannot hear. Hear. Always, always, do you always, do you always have it? it? Always, always this, one? this one? Well, you, well can, you can you can prove, you can prove that, that for, for for sigma, yeah, here, here is. If sigma is cuspid, actually, as long as sigma is unitary. Ah, okay, you short. assume that, okay, so. Yeah, assume the sigma is cuspid, okay. and so Okay, yes, 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 of course, okay. Bound, okay. Right? Yeah, you have, this, this is a similar idea, like uh, Lalan's proof the L function uh, absolute converging. Yeah, so it's yes, right, right. you assume something. Um, yes, yes, yeah, you have to assume something, <laughs> otherwise, it's uh, not true. Yeah, I, I, I had a question about, about just, just whoops, whoops, yes, yes, we're getting a lot of feedback here. Um, just so in this in this business, I mean, if I understand correctly, what you're starting with is you're, you're assuming you start with your sigma on G, you assume yeah. that there's a row transfer to locally to GLN, uh, yeah. the super suitable size because it's given by row, right? Right. In other words, the sigma is on G, it yeah. has local components, and then the local components because you have the row, you can take the Langlands parameters of the local components and push them forward and get local com local components for a representation of GLN for some suitable N determined by rho, right? Yes. And then what you're doing, I think, is taking the sort of direct image of this data, and let me call it the direct image of this data on GL, this go to Monchate data, so there's a matrix coefficient, a Schwartz function, and so on and so forth. And you're somehow pushing those forward out to GL1. Yes. And that's what, that's what you're using in your machinery. Yes. So you have a GL1 right. machinery and you're using this uh, local uh, functoriality to get yes. some data on GLN and then you push it forward, go go to Monchat K. Right. And my question is, uh, what do you gain by pushing forward to GL1 instead of just saying, if you have this local transfer from sigma it goes to a collection of pi, uh, pi, which is now not automorphic, but it's at least uh, locally, it's given by the local components of sigma by functorial, local functoriality. You have this data. If you just use the data, data on the GLN instead of pushing forward to GL1, do you, do you gain something by pushing forward to GL1 using this machinery? Or could you just work with the Godemont Chaquet uh, analog of what you're doing? Uh, what's the advantage of going to GL1? Uh, you heard, did you hear the my, I'm saying? No? I can hear you. Yeah, can. So now you're muted, Tiwa. Okay, how about now? You need to unmute. How, how about now? Now it's fine, we hear you. Okay, good. Well, I, yeah, I push it to GL1, there is two, two reasons. First of all, I want to see that, you know, for the, for the general L function, if without geometry, without this structure, your only analysis, how hard it could be, right? 
So if we push to G one, so there is no geometry, only just line, right? So just a, a key cross. And locally, you 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 see the this machinery is just meaning transform now. And the point is, how do you uh, understand the functions, and how do you prove the Poisson summation formula? So, so this may suggest to analyst, right? So, so learn on the program is a sort of you take uh, the tools from analysis and to to do L function to do things, right? To do automorphic. But uh, now, how about uh, you, this Lanland's conjecture, how to imply, uh, you, you know, produce questions to analysis, right? So, see this, originally we, we use like a data thesis to use original class, uh, like a Fourier transforms, Fourier analysis. And now we have these Fourier operators and show us space. So analysis should interest should be interested in in this object. Uh, I don't know if uh, the the analytic theory is ready for us to use to prove this Poisson summation formula. So we we will, we have to see it. But if, for example, you know, I mean, let's take uh, uh, G is G O two and take a row like a symmetric nth power, right? So now the cuspidality suppose has something to do with the Poisson formula, right? So now the, 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 the key point now is you only have a GL1 object here, and now you have GL2 cuspidality. See if you can win. So this, this is what I, in my mind. You know, maybe still very hard. There's no way you can win, or I don't know. So at so least, at least you, 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 I, I, I want to guess. guess. Have, you, have you tried, I mean, symmetric powers, for example, have you tried to push yes. it somehow? Uh, you, you, you know, if, we, if you have symmetry power, say, for example, oh, symmetry, symmetry power, power you have, you have two, two, three, four, three, four. It is it no, is right? No, right? Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, of course. Uh, this, uh, this, this, this is a commission formula holds. Right, so right. in other so words, yeah, by, I think, uh, think uh, Friedel and uh, Kim, Kim, yeah, Henry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, they so prove uh, symmetry. symmetry. Yeah, of yeah, course, symmetry is about Jacquet, right? Jacquet and Gelba. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, for these cases, the Poisson summation formula is true. But it's not a right proof. Because, because you, you use, use pathology. But yeah, this is, is, is valid, right? Can, it is, it is, it is it without, without pathology. Okay. Right. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't know I, I if don't this game will win. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but, but I don't know. So you sort of push the everything down to GL1. Yeah. yeah, so it should be become, become, become analysis. analysis. There's, there's, there's yeah, no there's geometry. geometry. No. no. Yeah. So you can get uh, you can't get any help from geometry. That's yeah. <laughs> well, I, I read on. If I know <laughs> if Brahman Kashidan uh, works, I can descend Brahman Kashidan the monoid to G one by yes. the abelianization map. Okay. Yeah. So you you expect to get the same thing. Mm -hmm. So so this means that uh, in from all the aspects, you you see this person submission should be there, mm -hmm. right? From uh, Lanland's Fontality, from Grau, Gu, Gu, uh, Brahman Kashidan, so this person submission is there, okay. and this GL one submission person submission is enough for the global functional equation. Mm -hmm. When you were doing GLN, you had some some space that some place that you had a classical Poisson summation. You yes, know. right. How do you think this will be happening in general? I mean, what do you think? I I, I don't know. So this is this is next step I want to explore. Okay. See, okay. if if 
classical analysis will help us. So otherwise, we should talk to the classical analysis, see how, what do you think about this passing summation formula? You know, they may understand, they understand now, I mean, this, this problem now, right? So mm -hmm. they don't understand the Langlands program, but they understand these kind of passing summation formula. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully they can help us. So I had one, one, one other question, one other comment. Uh, the comment was that, um, that you're making this assumption that the pi is cuspidal, right? So that you can use go to Yes. Um, so what's true is that sometimes these so go to type zeta integrals can be done for the non-cuspidal case, but what you do is use HECA operators to kill the support of the, of the, in the theta function. Yeah, yes, yes. So, uh, I mean, this, Rollis is what, uh, this, in... this, this, uh, this is what the last theorem says. Here. Okay. Anyway, it was just a comment. I mean, because Rollis and I, for example, we yeah yeah we yeah did use some kind use, of thing where we look at series. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so you apply yeah, an operator that kills the support, right. and then you divide by the mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, that was yeah. the first comment. Um, let's see this. So now maybe I've forgotten the second comment. I guess uh, just a moment. Um, uh, yeah. So, I mean, so you're now on GL1 and yes. you have these sort of uh, Fourier operators and so on and so forth. Do you have any kind of abstract characterization of the family of operators that you have? And as you're talking about, if you want to carry this to classical people, then yeah. you have two things this that is, are this is magical another, here. This is, I mean, this you have is some another, kind of short space, subspaces. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you have these well, funny this is, short, this is, su funny spaces. This is another uh, and project uh, I, I'm thinking. Yeah. The, yeah. Is there some characterization the, of what you get, for example? Yeah, I, you see, what we have this kernel function, you know, the Fourier transform is the, the Hankel operator, right? Hankel transform. Right. And so you have distribution. So I, I wish you can write down, see, in the Archimedean, at least in the Archimedean situation, you can write down like a differential equation for this. You, you, you know, if you really want to under, understand analysis, you have to write down the, just like I show, I expect that this is a kind of Bessel, as a reformulation of the Bessel distribution, Bessel functions. Yeah, so, but uh, now you define by rho, right? Sigma, so how do you indicate this? It's a kind of Bessel, Bessel distributions. But even, even in the case of you take symmetric powers for GL2, yeah, uh, you should get some family of operators that have some kind of intrinsic description or some form that you can say, okay, here are the operators. If you wanted to take it to an, an analyst and you'd want to talk about symmetric powers and Langlands factoriality, what yeah. you need to do is to say to them, look, here's here's a bunch of operators. What can you say yes. about this family of operators without yeah, uh, so, describing the so, so in other words, uh, yeah, in other words, we define the distribution by localized integral. So maybe we can find differential equations so that that will be the solution of these guys. And then that will be a very, very good uh, progress. Or you find another other expressions, you know, you know. like uh, in the Dublin case, we, we, we do write down, write down a formula. Yeah, the Dublin case, we have formula, so. Yeah, so this will be the next step. So if you push hard enough, you can do that. Any further questions? If not, then let us thank the speaker again. Thank you very much. So, uh, our next speaker in two weeks on, uh, on July 28th is uh, Siddhartha Sahi. And, uh, uh, his title, it's joint work with uh, me and with Raul Gomez.
So his title is Stone von Neumann Equivalence for Smooth Representations and its Application to the Generate Whitaker Models. I'll send an announcement where he will come up with an abstract. So I'll see you in a couple of weeks okay. and 